Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video. I'm Rex Finance, and today we're gonna get into the next installment of the much anticipated three stocks to buy series. Obviously, the upcoming month is August, so this, this video is gonna be for the month of August. Right now, our YouTube channel is the fastest growing stock market YouTube channel on all of YouTube, and it would be pretty cool to maintain that. So if you wouldn't mind if you're new here or returning and not yet subscribed, Please hit the subscribe button down below. But let's go ahead and review the three stocks I picked for the month of July. It was pretty spectacular. The first stock pick I had was Workhorse, tier symbol WKHS. And since uploading that video, Workhorse is up 47.78%. Kind of crazy. My second stock pick was Flux Power. And since I uploaded the video, Flux Power is also up 38.67%. By the way, I made a video on Flux Power. I shouldn't have done so because it has 10,000 views and it's a lot of the reason why the stock price is up so high. I was not done buying the stock yet, but you guys bid the price up so much that I've had to slow my buying down, darn it. And then lastly, my least risky investment that I have was my third stock pick and that's PayPal stock. I view PayPal as really easy money. I'm looking to potentially buy long-term call options that expire in January of 2025. I'll keep the members updated on that. If you want to join my membership, it's the cheapest one on YouTube. You get tons of value. If you don't find value in it, I will refund you. I'll make you that promise right now. So hit the join button down below or hit my Patreon link in the pinned comment. But PayPal stock in its own right was up 14.64% since I made that video of three stocks to buy. You know, I released that video on July 6th and it just so happens that all three of my picks literally found their short-term bottom on January 6th. That helped quite a bit. Given our tremendous return over the last month on these three stock picks, I need to mention this. I'm not a short term investor. I'm not a short-term trader, I should say. I am a long-term investor. I will not be taking profits on any of my positions that I have in those three companies. I believe in these companies for the very long term, and I believe they are still tremendously undervalued, and there's no point in me taking profits because of that. But I would be lying if I said it wasn't nice to see some of my stocks up a bunch over the past month. It was a crazy month of July, and I hope the month of August is just as good to us. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this this month's stock picks. Stock pick number one is a company called Lifecycle Holdings, ticker symbol L-I-C-Y. This is a company that I could see myself retiring on alone. Right now, this company has a billion dollar market cap, but I believe over the very long term, this is going to hit over a hundred billion dollars of market cap, which means every $10,000 I invest into this company, I believe will turn into a million dollars. Now, I don't think this is gonna happen overnight. I know it's not gonna happen overnight. I plan to invest in this company until I retire or until I croak and they send me six feet under the ground. But what gets me excited about this company is because it's in such a young industry that's gonna be the fastest growing industry on the entire planet over the next few decades. What they do is they recycle old batteries and take the chemicals and minerals and materials out of those batteries and sell them back into the supply chain. They have a spoke and hub business model where they come out with this black mass out of the spokes. They transport this black mass into what will be their operational Rochester hub, which they can break this black mass down into lithium carbonate, nickel sulfate, cobalt sulfate, etc., and sell those minerals and chemicals back into the supply chain. It just makes sense. We waste so much money and so much time throwing used batteries away when there are still chemicals and compounds in these batteries that can be reused to make new batteries. Instead, we're spending money and countless time to try and mine a new nickel, new lithium, and new cobalt. It makes zero sense. I'll have an updated in-depth video on this company, so stay tuned for that. I'll also have a new interview with the CEO coming up very, very soon. But this is an absolutely ginormous enormous opportunity. Right now, there are only seven analysts that cover this company. And on average, these analysts expect the company to grow 430% year over year next year in 2024. This is a company that's going to grow revenues and earnings at hundreds of percent for many years to go into the future. We're still at the very beginning. We're still at the genesis of battery production and electric powered vehicles. When all of those batteries start to reach their end of life, that's when Lifecycle can capitalize. However, this company already does have sales. This year, they're expected to do $32 million in sales. And this investment might be my best kept secret. 
The Department of Energy themselves is providing the company Lifecycle with a $375 million loan to help them with their construction and their growth. This Rochester hub that I talked about is expected to support the battery needs of approximately 203,000 electric vehicles annually, and this is just the company's first hub. The Department of Energy can provide loans to companies like Lifecycle with the cheapest terms available. Literally, they're paying what the federal funds rate is essentially on this loan. There is nowhere else you'd be able to borrow money for cheaper than the government itself. And I'll let you in on a little bit of a secret with investing. If you're investing in a company that the government backs, it's an unstoppable company because the government can print as much money as it wants and they can literally force their hand into making a company succeed. So that takes a whole lot of risk out of investing in Lifecycle. Sure, we're still in the very early innings, but the risk here is still very, very limited in my opinion. But just to be fair and to consider both sides of the equation here, there still is risk with Lifecycle. Maybe batteries don't end up getting used as much as people thought they would. Maybe hydrogen takes over and we don't need lithium batteries anymore. But more specifically, this is not a profitable company right now. In fact, they won't be profitable until 2025 or 2026, which is two or three years down the line. Now, it's going to be pretty hard for the company to go bankrupt when they have over $400 million of cash on their balance sheet. And the debt they have on their balance sheet is literally the cheapest debt that any company could obtain. If anything, the government is just going to inject more capital into this company, saving them from bankruptcy. Now, in my opinion, regardless of what the government does, I don't see any risk of bankruptcy here based on my own research and understanding. And that's this is an important time. This is an important note and a good time for me to mention that I'm not a financial advisor. These are my own thoughts, opinions, and ideas about these companies. Doesn't mean I'm going to be right. I wish I had a crystal ball because I could be a trillionaire and, you know, I don't know what I'd be doing, but, but I don't. I've been wrong in the past. I'll be wrong in the future. I'm just hoping I'm right more times than I'm wrong. All right, so the second stock pick of today's video is one that most of you will recognize, N phase energy. Most stocks this year have performed very, very well. Your portfolios probably reflect that. But Enphase Energy is the exception to this. Year to date, Enphase Energy is down 40%. This company has been beaten down by recession fears as well as fears over the housing sector. And maybe some of that is warranted, but right now I see Enphase Energy as a tremendous buying opportunity. I personally don't own any Enphase yet, but I'll be looking to get into this company sometime during the month of August. If by chance you're not familiar with Enphase Energy, they develop and manufacture solar micro inverters as well as battery energy storage, basically just batteries. I don't know why they have to put energy storage and EV charging stations primarily for residential customers. So this is the key word here, residential. All of these fears about the housing sector obviously doesn't mean good things for a company when their major customer is residential. As of now, Enphase Energy is still down around 55% from their all-time highs. I don't know when this stock is going to reverse its trend and head back upwards. All I know is eventually it will. And if I do end up buying Enphase Energy and it just goes lower, all the better. It just means I can buy more shares of the company at an even cheaper valuation. That's pretty hard to complain about. Now, if you're really keen, you might have noticed this headline from Reuters. Enphase Energy slumps as lukewarm U.S. demand weighs on revenue forecast. I personally think Enphase Energy sandbagged their guidance numbers by quite a bit. This is just a $20.5 billion company at this point. And last quarter, in Q2, they did $711 million of revenue. They also achieved gap gross margin of 45.5%, had operating income of $170 million, and had net income of $157 million. And the free cash flow is very impressive. Free cash flow of $225 million. Ending cash, cash equivalents, and marketable securities of $1.8 billion. Since 2020, this company has added essentially a billion dollars of assets to their balance sheet every single year. They had $1.2 billion in assets in 2020. $2.1 billion of assets in 2021, and $3.1 billion of assets in 2022. This is turning into an absolute juggernaut. And the $1.8 billion of cash they have on their balance sheet is cash they can use to grow their business. Analysts are expecting this company's earnings to grow like crazy over the coming years, 
Earnings per share, they expect to go up from $5.15 this year to $6.70 next year. And I actually think their revenue forecasts here are low for next year. They only see Enphase Energy growing at 18.3%. But if our economy continues to sidestep this recession and the housing market stays relatively strong and maybe more units start to move... I could see the company doing 20 to 25% revenue growth next year in 2024. And they're just getting into the electric vehicle charger market. In the US, this industry is growing at a CAGR of 40%, and they haven't even started selling these electric vehicle chargers in the US yet. They're planning on introducing it globally over the coming couple of years. But this is why the stock ended up taking a beating. They only forecasted revenue for the third quarter of 550 to $600 million. I think they sandbagged this like crazy. That seems way too low to me. Now, yes, I agree. I think their revenues are likely to be down again from their second quarter because they reported $711 million in sales. And yes, the housing market has been a little bit tough. Units aren't moving. But forecasting $550 to $600 million in revenue is all... Come on. In my opinion, the low range of this would be $600 million and the high range would be $675. Now, it remains to be seen if I'll be correct about that. I could be wrong. But if this company comes out and beats next quarter's earnings when it comes to sales and gross margin and net income, it really sets the stage for Enphase Energy to have quite a comeback. And this is just another company that benefits tremendously from government subsidies. The government is investing in these sorts of businesses, encouraging consumers to buy these sorts of products. And that's not just the federal government. That is state governments around the country as well. So Enphase Energy is another example of because the government's behind them, I think this is an unstoppable business model over the next decade. And then my third stock pick was one that you guys were a little frustrated I didn't include for the month of July, so I'll include it this month in August. If you're not familiar with my channel, one of my favorite investments is CleanSpark, ticker symbol CLSK. I've been following this company for years and years. I'm the longest standing YouTuber that covers CleanSpark, actually. And I've seen this company grow up right in front of my eyes. They're now doing over $125 million in trailing 12-month revenue. Revenue. Analysts expect this company's revenue to grow 118% in 2024 to $387 million. And just recently, I made a best case scenario video for CleanSpark. If you haven't seen it, click the eye in the top right hand corner and go watch that after watching this video. It really dives into my full bull thesis for CleanSpark and again, the best case scenario. CleanSpark is a company that mines Bitcoin. Why would you want to buy a company that mines Bitcoin? Well, it essentially hedges your portfolio against the risk that our current monetary system at some point will fail. And hint, it will fail at some point. Might not be in our lifetimes, or it might be in our lifetimes, but every single monetary system that's ever existed has eventually failed. And it's very concerning what we're seeing right now. The, our own government, the United States government, is broke. Interest payments on the national debt is approaching $1 trillion. It'll hit $1 trillion by the end of this year. That is larger than the market values of several mega cap stocks like Tesla. The government is paying this in interest. And you know how they pay this interest? They print more money. And this interest payment on debt now equates to 4% of the total GDP, which is the highest level since 1999. Regardless of anything, this is an unsustainable path for the United States government. They cannot continue to rack up debt and rack up interest because eventually they're going to get to a point where they can't print more money to pay their interest because the dollars are worthless because they have so much debt. And this is the risk you really protect yourself from by owning Bitcoin or a Bitcoin mining stock. But with that, I'm going to end this video here. I hope you guys have a great day. Stay blessed. Keep 10 toes to the ground and keep your chin up. Thanks for coming out. Leave a like down below. Comment down below three stocks you're buying this month. Peace out.